welcome back. Uh, in the last uh, class, uh, we introduced a function called excess function, which is something which we uh, discussed that is going to be relevant for uh, the liquid uh, phase. Uh, so, the definition was very simple. It is nothing but uh, is uh, difference uh, of the any property uh, with respect to the property in the ideal mixture. Okay, and this could be any property as I said uh, U S V H N H right. So, we said that well uh, uh, B excess or in general uh, can be defined as a B minus B ideal mixture and uh, this further can be shown that this is nothing but the delta B mix minus delta B mix ideal. And this uh, further can be extended for partial molar properties because being an extensive property you can use that and the definition of excess uh, that is the difference of the property with respect to that in the ideal mixture can further be extended to uh, uh, partial molar properties. So, that is how we defined G i bar excess. Okay. And then we showed that G i uh, G i bar excess is nothing but is related to uh, activity coefficient as R t l n uh, gamma i. So, this is something which uh, connects the it is rather the general property of the partial molar property okay, access uh, function okay, and this is something which will become very re relevant. Okay. So, uh, this further can be simplified in this form okay, that is what uh, we came up with in expression okay, that because uh, g i access if you weight it by the composition and sum it up it will become simply a molar gives uh, access function. Okay. So, this is something which we came up with that well g bar all this can be something like a small g access right. So, I can write this as a g of e okay, by r t and this is your summation x i ln, uh, ln gamma i. Okay. All right, now, I, uh, we can relate this thing uh, uh, to various different properties as we know that uh, your uh, dg is uh, minus s dt plus v dp. Okay. Since uh, uh, this thermodynamic function also holds for excess functions, so I can simply write uh, excess here okay. and uh, if you want to make it uh, i here, we can simply write as i. Okay, this is also fine, right? Now um, with this, I should be able to connect uh, the derivative of this, uh, which would be your let's say del l n gamma i by del p. Okay, at a given temperature and composition, can be written as uh, here. Okay, so if you take use g i bar axis. So, this is nothing but R t L n gamma i. So, if you take a dif differentiation of this with respect to the pressure, you are simply ask, saying that, that this is nothing but 1 by R t del of g i bar axis by del p t x right. So, uh, this is directly from this expression. Okay. Now, if I use the thermodynamic definition of uh, the Gibbs free energy because if you take the partial differentiation of this with respect to p, we are going to get uh, uh, vi excess at a constant temperature. So, I can write this as 1 by r t okay, or excess here. right? Okay, so, uh, this is something which we can show here. Similarly, I can also consider the case where we would like to have a partial differentiation with respect to temperature at a constant pressure. Okay, and this you can show as the following here. Again, I can write this as del g i excess by r t by del t, and since uh, we are so here the r t came in the denominator because it was a case of uh, differentiating with respect to the pressure, but here we are differentiating with respect to temperature and hence we kept it together as a part of it because ln gamma i is nothing but this and this is at a pressure and composition. Now, using this function or using this uh, definition here, I can show this th as follows because I can also write by definition that g is nothing but h minus t s and uh, we can say the g axis is h axis t axis and also we can 
write it like this. So, this way we have the definition here of g i xs also. So, we can also write this as in terms of xs, this is extensible to partial molar uh, properties. So, with this I can now uh, simplify the expression as the following without going into the details of it plus g i xs. So, if you take the differentiation you are going to get this. Okay, so, this is going to be g i partial differentiation of this and this r t square will come out like this and then you make use of these expressions which is here. So, you can show that you are going to get this expression and this from the definition is nothing but minus h i x by r t square which is nothing but minus of h i bar with respect to the pure molar property of the component i and hence I can write in this way. So, essentially what we connected here is that the partial uh, differentiation of this ln gamma i with respect to the pressure and the temperature are connected to excess uh, property or uh, excess molar property of uh, 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 you know the system of component i. Okay. So, this is how we connect that. Now, uh, we also mentioned about uh, gibbs duhem relations in uh, when it came to the fugacity part. Now, here also we can extend this expression and we can connect this activity coefficient should satisfy gibbs duhem relation. So, that will come out to be another important criteria. So, let us look at it. Uh, so, this activity coefficient which we have defined should satisfy the general uh, gibbs duhem uh, equation which is nothing but summation x i d e i okay, e is a, a thermodynamic potential and this uh, can be replaced by let us say g okay. and uh, this has to be equal to 0 and this uh, one can show that uh, the this is easily extensible for the following case where I can write this as simply E x at temperature at T and P or in other word I can write this as summation x i d l n gamma i at temperature T and P and this must be equal to 0. Right. So, with this uh, you have a condition of uh, gibbs duhem relation. Okay. Let us uh, uh, check uh, or use this information to understand how do you verify the data if you have the data of uh, activity coefficients uh, let us say for binary mixtures or multiple component mixture. So, how do you check that? So, you will be using this uh, constraint in order to verify the consistency of the data. So, we know in order to do a, uh, or demonstrate that we can consider a binary mixture. Okay. Okay. So, let us consider a binary mixture. Okay, so, uh, in that case uh, if we are considering uh, a g axis here which is going to be the r t uh, summation x i ln gamma i. Okay, so, this is for the binary mixture and what we want to show is that how uh, uh, that this gives the relation should be satisfied hence in order to check the thermodynamic consistency of the data. A uh, certain relation will evolve, and we would like to evolve that relation. Uh, let us look at it again, particularly this is a binary mixture. So, I can write this as x a, let us say you have a and b mixture, ln gamma a plus x b ln gamma b, all right. So, this is by definition we of the expression which we have got here right. So, I am using this expression that excess uh, molar gives free energy is related to the function or to the expression R t multiplied by summation x i ln gamma i and for the binary mixture I can write it like this. Okay. So, now at this point uh, what I can do is I can take uh, the differentiation of uh, 
uh, with respect to x a. Uh, so, if you do that I get the expression R t uh, ln gamma a plus x a d ln gamma a by d x a. Okay. And since it is x a and this x b is uh, nothing but 1 minus uh, x a and hence uh, if I do take a differentiation of this term with respect to x a I am going to get minus ln gamma b plus x b del ln gamma b by x a. So, I have an expression here. Now, uh, this term here tells you the following that if you take let us say if you take this and differentiate with respect to x a for the binary mixture this would mean that x a d l n gamma a d x b plus x b d l n gamma b by d x. So, if you take a just a differentiation with respect to b or divide by d x b x a uh, you are going to get this expression like this. Similarly, if you do the same thing for b you are going to get again an another expression, but it will be d l n gamma a divided by d x b. Now, uh, with this information this term has to go to 0 right and what remains is the following is r t l n gamma a minus r t l n gamma b right. So, you see gamma is activity coefficient f a and b. Now, what we can do is we can integrate this. So, I can have d of g of e as r t ln gamma a by gamma b d x of a right. Okay. So, I have an expression now if I integrate this. Okay. So, it will be from let us say 0 because if I taking x of a is 0 is uh, corresponds to pure b and here is 1 when x a is equal to 1 it corresponds to pure a right and then you have this r t ln gamma a by gamma b d x a. Okay. So, uh, what would be this uh, function? Uh, this is uh, something which you can consider or you can even eventually you can find it out by looking at just the left hand side. So, left hand side you have a function or you have a variable uh, d g x s okay. and since g is a thermodynamic function. So, it, it just uh, depends on the end points. Okay. So, if you look at the end points because it depends on the state point and hence uh, the end points are the relevant here. Now, the end points are the pure states. Okay. So, you have uh, g axis of the pure and the g axis of the pure A and pure B which must be if it is a pure A or B this must be equal to 0. right? So, with this the left hand side must be equal to 0. Okay. That means, this term must be equal to 0 or in other word integral of gamma uh, logarithmic value of gamma a by gamma b this must be equal to 0. Okay, so, this is a very important uh, expression eventually uh, because this is something which we can use to check our uh, determinations or our calculations of uh, uh, this activity coefficient and then we can check whether the data which we have used in order to evaluate that eventually is consistent or not. Okay. So, consistency would become at the end valuable because you can test the data and this is often used. For example, uh, if you consider let us say from 0 to 1 and let us say this is x and this could be an example of let us say ethanol plus water okay, at some temperature because we are fixing the temperature. So, a typical value of this log of gamma a by gamma b would be something like this that uh, it will be right till uh, 1 okay, which means that area under this and this must be equal to 0 and that is why uh, sorry area under this and this must be 
A of uh, let us say area of uh, this is let us say 1 and 2. So, A area under this and this must be equal to 0, uh, must be same and hence you, this integral should lead to 0. Okay. So, I hope that it becomes uh, clear that the reason for us to do this analysis first is to uh, consider the fact that uh, the gibbs johan relation should satisfy this gives you a constraint on the uh, logarithmic value of uh, gamma or activity coefficient. Now, using that uh, we can come up with a specific consistency test and that came out to be for binary mixture this for ternary and others the things will be the expressions are going to be different, but for binary this is the expression which it comes out to be. Okay. Now, uh, as we have discussed about uh, the uh, fugacity uh, that a fugacity coefficient uh, for that matter uh, can be evaluated if you have a very good uh, uh, equational state. Okay. And then we said well if you are interested to find out uh, let us say uh, the activity which is more suitable for liquid phase you need to also come up with a appropriate uh, models which represents the interaction parameters or the behavior of the fluid uh, on the liquid phase. Now, uh, this uh, gamma ln gamma i is uh, basically related to G e and hence the question is that can we come up with a suitable suitable models for excess gas free energy and that is something which now we are going to look into that because if you have the model and a suitable model you can you can make use of to obtain uh, uh, this gammas uh, that is activity coefficients okay? and then relate that with respect to the ideal mixtures and so forth. So, uh, let us now focus on this uh, excess uh, Gibbs free energy model okay? which would be relevant for us for calculating later uh, the vapor liquid equilibria for uh, where the vapor phase will be modeled using the fugacities and the liquid phase will be modeled using these activities. So, hence it becomes relevant to find out a suitable models for us for representing the liquid mixtures. So, if you look at uh, G of E, okay, uh, it must satisfy certain conditions. So, let us ex take an example of a binary mixture. Okay. So, for the binary mixture uh, G axis for the pure case are going to be 0. right? So, anyway the G axis has to be 0 if it is a pure. So, there are two uh, criteria or two conditions or limiting case which we have to consider that G axis should be 0 if uh, x 1 uh, is 0 or x 2 is 0. Okay. So, this is something which we can write it okay, that G axis is 0 if x 1 is 0 or x 2 is 0 or we can use the a and b also. Now, assuming that you are you using this uh, Lewis Randall reference state for both the component that means both the component exist in the 0 to 1 case. Uh, so, this must uh, of course, the other condition is that you know g axis must satisfy the Gibbs Johan relation that something is there already. So, the question is given this uh, this constraint or something which we know. Uh, which will have which will be the case uh, as far as the thermodynamic uh, definitions goes what would be the simplest model which satisfy these uh, conditions. So, if you look into that uh, you have this x 1 equal to 0 x 2 equal to 0 the simplest model which satisfy this condition would be a times some uh, a, a is a constant multiplied by x 1 and x 2. So, if you can consider this then this would be our simplest model where you have one constant and two so and two suffixes. So essentially, this is something which we call as two suffix Margulis equation. Okay, uh, due to Margulis, and here a because composition is there, so a is nothing but the unit of a is nothing but joules per mole. Okay, and the same as the g is here. So this is the simplest model which will represent non ideality of the liquid mixtures right that's something which is something which we are trying to will work on more uh, so let's uh, consider this this is a simplest model for non ideal mixture um, liquid mixture so, this is the simplest model. 
So, uh, one of the important thing is A. So, we will talk about this A, how do you get the A, but let me now first try to connect this expression or the model uh, to the uh, to the uh, activity coefficients. Okay, so let us uh, um, use this expression. So uh, the activity coefficient we know is uh, related to the partial uh, Gibbs molar uh, free energy uh, access of that uh, function. So in other word, uh, I need to use uh, the definition R T L N gamma one. If you look go back here, the definition will be clear again. So, the way we are writing is the following R T L n gamma i is G i x G i by x. So, you need to find out G i x here. So, if it is 1 then you have to talk about G 1 bar x right. Okay, so, this is nothing but del G x by n1 keeping the temperature pressure and n2 constant. So, this is let us say for the binary mixture. Okay. All right. Now, I can write this as uh, del by uh, if you look at it here the model which we are going to consider is g. So, essentially here this also means that g of x is n times a x1 x2 this is this is also indicated because this is a per mole okay a molar property so i can write this as okay and this can be uh, because a is independent of uh, composition a only depends on temperature and pressure so a is a function of temperature or pressure. Okay. So, I can take this A out del by del N 1 and X 1 X 2. Now, this I can further simplify A del by del N 1 N 1 and 2 by N 1 plus N 2 square multiplied by N here. So, this cancels out because there are two component n 1 plus n 2 is n. Now, if you further simplify this is going to be a times n 2 n 1 plus n 2 minus n 1 n 2 and this is n 1 plus n 2 square. And this further can be written as a n2 square by n1 plus n2 square. Now, which this is nothing but n, and hence I can write this as a x2 square. Okay. So you have a relation now, which tells you that this R T L n gamma 1 is a x2 square. Okay. Similarly. You can show that R T L n gamma 2 is A x 1 square. Now, this is because of the fact that we have considered G axis as uh, the one uh, constant or two suffix Margulis equation. So, if you change that model, the relations are going to change. Okay, but this is the simplest model which satisfy the limiting conditions. Okay. Now, the question is uh, how do you get this A? Okay. So, A can be uh, A can be fitted to the experimental data for the given binary function A is typically a function of temperature or pressure. Okay. It does not depend on the composition, but A basically gives you the idea of how particles are interacting. So, let us little bit look into this uh, aspect of that. So, I am going to spend little more time on this uh, understanding of uh, com component you know, uh, this parameter A, but this particular uh, thing which we mentioned here if you look at it here we mentioned these two aspects. First is that this is a limiting condition. The other thing is that this must also satisfy the, the Gibbs Johan relation. So, okay, so, must satisfy G D relation. So, let us first look into that and then we will discuss little bit of uh, uh, you know the, the concept of A and how A is related to interaction strength. But 
the first I am going to just uh, show that using this relation or using this model to two suffix uh, Margulis equation, uh, this should satisfy the Gibbs Johan uh, equation. So, let us check that for the case of the binary mixture. So, which essentially means show that summation x i d g i should be equal to 0. Okay. So, for the case of a mixture, so let us say is A and B mixture, this is this means that I can write this as d j a x s plus x b. Okay. So, uh, now you can play uh, find out the values of that. So, uh, value of this uh, uh, g a bar x s. So, g a bar x s by definition is uh, a x b square and uh, g b bar x s is a x square that is what we obtain it right. So, this is nothing but g 1 bar x s right. Similarly, this is nothing but g 2 bar x s. So, with this you can obtain so with this information you can obtain d of g a x s which is nothing but 2 times a x b d x b and this means that g b x s is 2 times a x a d x b. Now, if you use this in this equation you obtain the following that you have 2 x a x b d x b plus 2 a again x b x a d x b. So, we just look at the left hand side okay, here. So, left hand side. So, this is now 2 a x a x b which is a common and d x b plus. Uh, so, this has to be a right. So, d x b plus uh, d x a this right. So, now this here is nothing but d x a plus x b which is 1 and hence this must be equal to 0 that means left hand side is equal to 0 which means that this expression or two suffix equation leading to this expression of uh, R t L n gamma uh, is equal to A x 1 square, this satisfies the Gibbs Johan relation. Okay. So, this particular is something which can be used for explaining the behavior of uh, fluid mixtures and thus is a very simple though it is a very simple model, but it is useful in many cases and we will talk about this more in detail. Uh, at this point uh, that is something which we will, uh, so we will discuss about uh, uh, the A parameter in the next class and as well as uh, some examples uh, to illustrate the advantage of taking such models and the issues related to such models also. Okay, so, uh, that will be the end of uh, uh, today's class. I will see you next time.